Good morning. You are listening to Upreach, a morning devotional presented by the Church Street Church of Christ in Lewisburg, Tennessee, to encourage you as you face the opportunities and challenges of today. Let's begin this day together with some inspiring thoughts from God's Holy Word. Then the Lord sent Nathan to David, and he came to him and said to him, There were two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing except one little ewe lamb which he had bought and nourished, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. And a traveler came to the rich man, who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for the wayfaring man who had come to him, but he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. So David's anger was greatly aroused against the man, and he said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this shall surely die, and he shall restore fourfold for the lamb, because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel, and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your keeping, and gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You have taken his wife to be your wife, and have killed him with the sword of the people of Ammon. Second Samuel chapter 12, verses 1 through 9. There are times when evil must be confronted. When God judges a situation, he often uses his servants as vessels for communicating to the guilty party. Such is the case with David, who tries to conceal his sin of sleeping with Bathsheba and then orchestrating a cover-up plot that leads to her husband being intentionally set up to be killed on the battlefield. It is a wicked deed that easily becomes the most significant black mark upon David's life. There are times in the workplace where God may want to use you to be the instrument of God to bring righteousness to a situation. Sharon Watkins was a finance president at Enron, the now famous Houston-based energy company that went bankrupt because of financial fraud by top-level executives. By the summer of 2001, Sharon had become suspicious of her company's accounting practices. Watkins struggled with what she was to do when she discovered what was going on. She thought she might lose her job if she confronted other top-level managers, yet if she did not do something, it could impact the entire company and its employees. Sharon strongly believed that God was calling her to do something. At first, she decided to use constructive ways to bring the problem to her superiors. Eventually, she met with the CEO, Kenneth Lay, and outlined the elaborate accounting hoax that she believed was going on in the company. She was completely ignored. Months later, the company collapsed when the problems came to light and Lay was convicted on 10 counts of conspiracy. Sharon Watkins served as a modern-day Esther in the corporate world to expose a scandal that would destroy a company. She was recognized as Time Magazine's Person of the Year in 2002 for her role in exposing the scandal. What about you today? Are you willing to be the instrument of God, if necessary, to expose unrighteousness wherever it may be found? This has been Upreach, a presentation of the Church Street Church of Christ in Lewisburg, Tennessee. I am Kyle Bolton, the pulpit minister at Church Street, and I would like to personally invite you to come and share times of Bible study and worship with us each week. We meet every Sunday at 9 o'clock a.m. for our morning worship, followed by our Sunday school for all ages at 10.15 a.m. Then we meet again at 6 o'clock p.m. for our evening worship. We also have a midweek meeting for devotion and Bible study on Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. I hope to see you there. Have a blessed day. Straight is the road we're called to travel, many the trials along the way. There's a brighter day, brighter day on the other side. Trouble is always there before us, trusting in Jesus we can say, There's a brighter day, brighter day on the other side. There's a brighter day, brighter day coming over on the other side. Rejoice with saints.